Stand by for some of the best biscuits and gravy from a non-Southern gentleman you've ever had. But they're not just regular biscuits and gravy. We're making black pepper and green onion biscuits with chorizo gravy. Oh my goodness. They're going to be so good. Start with the uh, biscuits because we've got to get them in the oven. We start with two cups of regular all-purpose flour in my bowl. We're going to add to that a tablespoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. And we mix. A whisk is the perfect thing for this at this point. One of the keys to flaky, delicious biscuits is butter, but just not cold butter, rock hard butter. This bit in my freezer. Now, to deal with this the best way possible, we're gonna use a grater, because that's gonna give little tiny pieces of butter, which means little tiny pieces of fat scattered through our dough for this. And that, when they melt in the oven, that's gonna make flaky, perfect biscuits. So in this one stick of butter that's eight tablespoons, I need six tablespoons. So I take, I hold my box grater, and I grate. And this butter is exactly what we want. You just mix it around a bit. And continue. Almost there. And done. So now, you want to mix this in. The idea now is to get this butter mixed kind of evenly through this flour. And when you think you're nicely through all of it, all spread out into little, it's like, uh, it's like little, they say it looks like peas, right? When you're done. That's what they say. And you know, they always know everything they're talking about. So now we just make a little well in the center. So we're going to add two things. One, uh, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And the other is a half a cup of green onions. This part, not so traditional, but this part, my favorite part. Now, we're going to take a spatula and slowly start to incorporate the flour around the edges into the buttermilk in the middle. And then we're going to use our hands to try and make this come together a little bit better. It's not going to be perfect yet, but you'll see. We'll take out the spatula, use our hands to get it where we want it. So you can see, it's not going to stick together perfectly yet, but we'll give it a few more turns in here and then put it on the cutting board. And when you can almost get most of it out, get a little extra flour, put it on the board, and then bring out the dough. I totally forgot the black pepper. Yes, there's supposed to be black pepper that I forgot. Thank you. But see, you don't want, you don't want to work the dough too much. I have an idea. Thank you. I have an idea. So you're trying to get it into basically a rectangle like this. So watch what we'll do. And we're going to fold it a few times. So we'll use this opportunity to add some black pepper. Damn it, I forgot the freaking black pepper. Okay. Better late than never, right? Thank you, Jilly. So now here's what you do. We're going to fold it onto itself, then back again like this, and start to work this rectangle thing again. It's a little bit, it feels not like dough quite at this point, but it's going to get there. I think this is going to be the perfect way to add the black pepper. And if it really is, I will claim this as the plan all along. It's still sticky, so you still need this worked a bit. And once more. Okay, I've never done this with the green onions. I really do hope it works out.
Okay, now it's starting to get more dough-like. We don't want to work it too hard. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to put a little bit more flour down. Plenty of it on top. Grab my rolling pin. A little flour on the rolling pin itself. And then we roll. We want this to be, you know, half to three quarters of an inch. How's that look? Looks like almost a half an inch, right? Okay, now we go like this. Using a parchment covered baking sheet or a sill pat, which is a permanent one that always stays non-stick. We can put a link at the bottom. We take our two and a half inch cutter and we go. But you don't want to turn too much because if you do, you're gonna, you're gonna take the edges that you want to see those flaky layers and ruin them. So just don't. So just kind of just push down. Tiny turn is fine. So get as many as you can. We're gonna put them on here. Ideally, get as many as you can because what you'll do next is crunch up the rest of this, these outside pieces. It'll make a biscuit that's good, but not quite as good as the original ones that were pressed out, so. I love the green onion in there, boy. I think I could have been a southern gentleman. I really could have. I don't want to overwork this too much, so I'm gonna just try and squeeze it together as best as I can, and then just get a couple more out of here. One, two, three, calling it a day. All right, beautiful, right? I love this, I love this. Now we take a little bit more buttermilk and we just brush the tops of these guys. That'll help with a little browning. And one more thing we're gonna do, and it will help a little bit more pepper stick to the top. Just so you know what you're getting. I like that. These into a 450 degree oven. 15 to uh, 20 minutes until they're beautiful. But this happens next. And by that, I mean the chorizo gravy. So here's what we're using. Uh, I'm not pimping this brand. It's definitely a brand that I use, but I'm not being paid to say anything about it. Although a lot of people do say there's a lot better store-bought chorizo out there, but I've only ever seen you purchase that one. So is there a reason? I like this one. I know. I like and I'm it lazy too. as as anything, and I go to the the supermarket that's right by me, and this is the one they carry. So I think what they're saying is I should be going to like a Mexican market. I do live in San Diego. We do have great Mexican markets, and buying maybe fresh pork chorizo. Yeah, maybe right? we should. Okay, I need to. I need to. All right, all right, all right. So don't yell at me for this time. Pork chorizo. That's what we're using not Spanish chorizo, which is a cured sausage like a salami. This is, this is Mexican pork chorizo. There's also beef. I've talked about it. I don't like beef chorizo. And soy chorizo that I would actually use second to this one before beef. So here's what we have to do with it. We need a knife that I took in. Hold on. So sorry. Stand by. Nobody move. So here's how you deal with this. It has to be cooked. It's completely raw. I'll just make a little cut. Turn the guy over and squeeze it out. I know it's gross. It's gross. Make whatever comments you want. Insert comment here. But that's the way to do it. And then, oh boy, especially gross right that second. But then you've got an empty package. It's not on your fingers. So now we just have to cook it. I'm using the spatula summer eight. So now just break it up a little bit. This is going to take you five or six minutes on sort of medium high heat. So just mush it around. Let it cook a little bit, come back, stir it around a little bit more. You'll see, you'll see how it starts to change. Darkens a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And it will break up a little bit more. So Max brought up a good point. Uh, why chorizo instead of like uh, uh, pork breakfast sausages, which you could do. You could use a turkey sausage. You could use almost anything. But here's the thing, I like to use fewer ingredients but that deliver more flavor or more punch this has a lot of spices already in it so i say it's one ingredient but it really eats like five or six if i can get a if 
I can get a product like that, I'm going to use it every time, you know? We did a burger not too long ago, and rather than using a plain hamburger bun, I used an onion roll. So look, it's still the same thing. It's a bun versus a bun, but the onion roll has more flavor. Chorizo, tons of flavor. Use your regular sausage if you want. I'm just telling you. Change the stuff up a bit. Okay? And after the five or six minutes, you come back and it looks like this. And you notice it's starting, it's gotten a lot more uh, sort of grainy, like individual little pieces of, of meat in here, right? So it's there. Now here's what we add. You ready? We add a pint of whipping cream. A pint. I know. This is going to be outstanding. By the way, this is the same. Uh, this is the same recipe for the chorizo cream for the enchiladas that we make. So this recipe being duplicated again, but in a different form, ladies and gentlemen. And now it really just needs to simmer lowly on here for the next 10, 15 minutes to thicken up. And these are done, so we can have a look and check them out. Hello, guys. I like the pepper on top. If you pick one of these guys up, you see the layers? There, steam. And so, look, they're not super high like maybe a southern grandmother gets. My biscuit game is not that strong, but they're gonna be delicious. They're, gonna, they're just gonna be perfect for what we're doing. And see, these four back here are the ones that I made with the dough that I had to reclump. And you can see they're not as, they're just not as nice. So you always want your first pressing to be as many as you can get. I mean, at least I should have a bite before the chorizo gravy is ready, right? Steam. Pepper. Green onion, butter, biscuit. Mad deliciousness. The pepper is great. The green onion is freaking outstanding. <sighs> Almost ready. One more thing, we're there. <clears throat> And to finish this off, we're going to add about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. Oh boy, this is going to be good. It's just going to thicken it up a little bit. Add that little Parmesan tang that I love so much. Okay, this has thickened up beautifully. Look at it. Come on now. Hey, pretty or handsome. Not sure what chorizo gravy would be if it's a male or a female, but it doesn't matter because it's done. They are done. Uh, and now we're ready to do this, except I don't think I can ever have biscuits and gravy without an egg. So we'll cook an egg. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, don't be, don't be so hot. A little salt and pepper. Look it. Thank you, darling. Almost ready to flip you, you pretty little thing. All right, let's do this. We push those off to the side. We bring in our beautiful piece of slate. That, sorry, needs a little last minute clean. <laughs> I don't know how that got dirty. And. I don't know if I should open them up or just, it's probably the proper way to do it, is to open them up, but I'm not going to. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's my egg. Now we take some of this rich, beautiful chorizo gravy. We put it on top. Oh. Sinful, it's sinful, ladies and gentlemen. And our egg. Uh, that I'll give it one quick flip. We're ready. Comes the egg. Ow. Right there. What would it be without a little bit of green on top for everyone? And as they say, voila. So let's try the biscuit. 
Mmm. The flaky, flaky layers. Bite of this mm. by itself. The smell. Mmm. Look, I know it should be about 40 below, and I'm in Fargo, and I've just come in from my patrol car and the blizzard outside. But it's 70 in San Diego, and it's still amazing. It's still amazing. Uh, now a bite of the egg. Should we have a bite of the egg? What, what are they? Of course, people want to watch this, but runny yolk. Mm. And it mixes with the gravy here, and then you get some of this on the biscuit, and you have this kind of a bite. This kind. Look at it dripping. Wait for it. I didn't do it. Oh, come on. What? It's a flavor explosion. The green onions doing all the right things. The trezos bringing that sort of gentle amount of heat. Don't think it's crazy hot because it's not. It's just the best. The whole thing, and you need an egg in this. The yolk runs and makes everything just richer than it should be. And I'm going to keep eating. So thank you for hanging out with us. No, I don't like to repeat myself, but it means a lot. We love that you're here and liking and commenting and subscribing and all that. Getting Macca shirts. And getting Make America Cook. Chorizo gravy and green onion and black pepper biscuits. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm.